Well, good day there, everybody right around the world. Thanks a lot for joining me as at this Wednesday afternoon market recap. There is about 45 minutes left in today's session. What I'm going to do, however, is speak to you about the Russell 2000. A couple of weeks ago, I picked up on this during that pro recording, which I do each and every Saturday. And it's about time that I share it with this wider sort of public audience that tunes in and listens to my market recaps and also individual stock analysis, or at least the recap of those individual stocks, namely the ones on the left hand side of my screen. However, today I am going to include both LUV and DAL absolutely. Also potentially a couple of others. Today we saw some pretty impressive rises off from their respective support areas, uh, which is pretty exciting to see. But before we get into that, let me just bring up the chart of the Russell 2000. Now what caught my eye on this first of all, was that it looked as though we were entering into that of a symmetrical type of triangle. You can see for yourself, since the end of, I guess, that bull market run up in the month of January, this is the first oscillation down to support, which ended very early on in the month of February. Since then, you can see the Russell 2000 has been, again, oscillating between support and resistance as we've been drawing closer to the apex. This is very interesting because what I'll do, I'll share with you, when we talk about, or when we reference that of symmetrical triangles, generally we're looking for measured moves and measured moves generally happen in the direction of the prevailing trend. So if I zoom out and show you this on the Russell 2000, there is a point and a purpose to this. I mean, that's why I'm walking through this analysis with you. But anyway, continuing on, the break of the symmetrical triangle generally occurs in the direction of the prevailing trend. So going back into the analysis, you can see for yourself very clearly that, I mean, I'm zooming out, zooming out, zooming out. It's very hard to see, but essentially we are in that of a larger bullish move. So it makes complete sense that most recently, we have seen once again, as the Dow, as the NASDAQ, as the S&P 500 have stabilized and bounced of their respective support areas, the Russell 2000 has again pushed to the upside. Now, it appears as though we're breaking out of this sort of resistance area. However, what I can do also, not to confuse anyone, but to make this as sort of non-directionally biased, or at least to keep the analysis as neutral as possible, is also draw that of sort of a horizontal resistance line that we're pushing on back on up into on the Russell 2000. So why am I doing this? What makes this uh, important? Now, the reason I'm doing this right now is because it doesn't matter whether you call this a symmetrical triangle, or whether or not you want to call it an ascending triangle. And what I mean by ascending triangle is that if you pay attention to this red sort of ascending line uh, that I've just drawn and also this horizontal resistance, you can see that if I can draw on these uh, movements back and forth, that this is looking like, again, that of an ascending triangle. Now, both of these patterns break in the direction or should break in the direction of the prevailing trend. That is to the upside. Now, what is interesting about this? That's essentially step one. So I just uh, wanted to walk you through that. Very simple, very straightforward, but it makes sense of, of course, some of this price action, which has been relatively choppy to the untrained eye. Now, again, when we're talking about these types of movements, symmetrical triangles or even ascending triangles, even uh, descending triangles, what essentially we're looking for is a target, a target of, well, where is this individual sort of index or even a stock going to move to once it definitively breaks out of the constructs of the actual triangle itself? Now, what you generally do is you take the first wave oscillation of the triangle itself. So if we take roughly 1,600, as you can see, in the top uh, right-hand corner of my screen, let's just say the base is in at 1,450, all right? You can see that we came on down on this particular session. We tagged it, we bounced off it. We were left with this long, lower wick, buying pressure, blah, blah, blah. You know the story at this macro support. We can say to ourselves that, look, this movement from here down to here is roughly 150 points. Now, I mean, that's all well and good, 150 points. What does this mean? Well, the interesting thing is, when you start sort of forecasting this from the current pivot where we find ourselves at, again, let's just call it 1,600 because it's a, it's a round number and we can do the maths with that quite easily. But if we just project 150 points onto 1,750 on the Russell 2000, this is going to take us more or less all the way up to roughly this 1,030 pivot, if not 1,750, depending on course, when we actually break out of the triangle definitively, if you want to call this the upper horizontal resistance area. But it's bringing us generally to this point up here. And this is what uh, I wanted to speak about really from the inception of this video today as that, or close to the close anyway, on Wednesday, because you might be asking yourself, well, why is this relevant? Why is this important? I mean, why are you going through this analysis? And there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, if you look at the Russell 2000, you can see that most recently as at Tuesday, we pushed to a new intraday 
all-time high. So this is good. The Russell is saying, look, the trend continuation uh, is still in effect. There's no, uh, there's, there's no signals yet that, look, the Russell is trying to turn or wanting to turn. It is relatively strong. Yes, today we did pull on back a little bit. Yes, we saw a dark candlestick yesterday, but that is expected up and around resistance areas. Um, but with the Russell strong, and of course, this is taking into consideration 2,000 smaller uh, companies by market value anyway, compared to that of say the Dow or the NASDAQ or the S&P 500, we can say that look, market breadth, so to speak, is still relatively strong. Why? Because we're all the way back up at these highs. And this is of course the Russell 2000. Now, what is interesting about this, you're going to have to sort of concentrate with me and be <clears throat> a little, uh, zoom in onto certain elements of the chart. This is where it gets interesting because if we start taking the 2003 low, on the Russell 2000. And this was essentially after, you, you know, the tech wreck and the lead up into what is most recently known as or what the, the last bear market was uh, in 2008 09. You can see for yourself that this is the bullish trend line. And you can see that we tagged it or got very close to tagging it on a number of occasions. This is the monthly chart, so it's not going to align absolutely perfectly, but you get the point. This is a bullish trend line that was in effect from the year 2003 all the way through to 2007 when we began to actually break down below it, which set up, of course, uh, the big capitulation towards the back end of 2008 into the early stages of 2009. So when you start, I guess, aligning some of this technical picture, again, this is the monthly chart, so it may look a little bit different depending on uh, sort of the, 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 the capture or the fractal that you're looking at it. But anyway, when I zoom on out again, and if you pay attention to this line over here, this is the red extension of the trend line, which again took us from 2003 to through to the back end of 2007. You can see for yourself, if you pay very close attention to this line, I'm going to sort of draw over it with my cursor just so I can make this as clear as possible. We're following it all the way on up to really the current juncture. If I begin to zoom on to the, the most recent picture, if I zoom in, hopefully you can see what I'm what I'm hinting at here. If you take that measured move, okay, from where we currently are, the first symmetrical triangle, and you project it, that 150, 140, 160 points, we're getting X marks the spot on the Russell 2000 at around that 1,750 area. And this is interesting because again, when we go back and project the trend line that ended in 2007, this is becoming that of uh, a resistance area in the future. Now it looks as though this bull market advance is towards uh, the end of what has been a tremendously profitable bull market. And this is giving us some pretty fascinating targets. They don't have to work out. However, say for instance, uh, the Russell, it continues to rally up and we start to see some dark candlesticks up and around this pivot at 1,730, 1,740, 1,750, you get the story. That may turn out to be a very important area of resistance, potentially coinciding with, you know, another breakout, which is bound to happen or what looks to, to sort of be inevitable on the industrial average, the S&P and the NASDAQ moving forward. And we're going to have to think about this, uh, first of all, if we get on up into this area, and then if we start to see reversal signals. So I just wanted to speak about real chart patterns that are in effect, whether or not you want to call this a symmetrical triangle. If you want to call this a symmetrical triangle, we've already broken out. Uh, however, what I also like to do is always respect support and resistance as I guess the top or the final or the most uh, pertinent piece of analysis no matter which chart it applies to and obviously where price action is sort of interacting at or with at any given time. So that's a couple of ways of, I guess, dissecting the Russell 2000. We can go through and say, look, we're still above the long-term simple moving averages, which again is uh, is out of a bull market sort of continuation. We're above the exponential moving averages, but that's sort of breaking down because we have largely been moving sideways, a little bit overboard at the moment, uh, but there is opportunity for this to break out. I'm not calling for the breakout, say tomorrow come Thursday or Friday, uh, but if we can, first of all, hold above 1,515, if we oscillate back up potentially into the apex, or if we definitively break above the swing high on Tuesday, well, then that opens the door to higher prices. Those higher prices are essentially going to be the back test of what has been or what was once that of a bull market from 03 to 07 on the Russell 2000. Always remember that trend lines themselves, uh, once broken, will act as resistance in the future. And this is the perfect example how we can come to some pretty pretty amazing sort of targets moving forward, especially when these markets 
uh, at new all-time highs. Now, going back into, I guess, the market address, of, I'm going to go through the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P and speak about a couple of individual stocks. Now, I just wanted to share that with you uh, with the Russell 2000. The NASDAQ down today, down 59 points. We still have, again, about an hour or 45 minutes of trade left in today's session. It's just past uh, 3 p.m. now. But on the NASDAQ, you can see we have a little gap here. And what was originally that of a sell-off is beginning to get bought. And this is sort of coinciding with this pivot over here. So this might not be the end of the selling, so to speak. But at the same time, we're coming back down into a logical area uh, of support. You can also see that we're trying our very best to actually tag that rising 10. We didn't hit it today. We're already starting to see a reaction. And this is just probably a few people taking some profits after what has been a most recent sort of spike in bullish activity over the past one and a half weeks. Now, again, interestingly enough, NASDAQ is coming on all the way back on up to try and close this gap. It still hasn't done so. So I'm expecting at least another push on up to take us on to at least close this gap, which is coming in at 7467. But what will happen is when we get here, will probably linger because we still have the Dow and of course the S&P 500 that have a long way to go. We've got the Dow, which is still possibly going to run up to 26,435. Nothing has changed in that analysis. Again, a gap down yesterday, but we're stabilizing uh, as at this video. We don't really have all that much of a lower wick, but you can see largely we're simply moving really nowhere between yesterday and today's session. The same is true for the S&P. However, we've actually pushed on up and we've closed this uh, little gap here. So that's pretty pretty good to see as well. So we're rather neutral, so to speak, as we enter into Thursday's session, but still overwhelmingly, there is a bullish sort of undertone to the market moving forward. I wouldn't be concerned about any sort of major sell-off. And if we are to see a little bit of selling pressure, I've already recapped that we've got some really nice structural sort of support areas. Again, on the S&P, you can see we're starting to see a little bounce as of sort of the movement that we saw on Tuesday. And then of course, today's session, and also potentially these rising exponential moving averages. The reason why I'm looking at these a little bit more interested at the moment is because we've broken out of this downward sort of resistance area, and we're actually holding above the exponential moving averages. And it looks as though we could be in the early stages of that move on these respective markets back up to these resistance areas. So having said that, I'd like to recap a couple of stocks that have caught my attention today. We've got DAL, which is, uh, you know, really rocketing to the upside. We had to sit through that little pullback on Monday, really nothing yesterday, but today it's starting to take off a little bit. I think it's up close to 3%. As that, oh, as I pardon me, record this video up a dollar and thirty three cents. This is not going to be the closing price, by the way. So we're going to have to monitor this. But by all standards, right now it's a long day Morabozo, a little bit of a shaved upper wick, but this could change. We still have again forty five minutes, so to speak, left in today's session. But DAL certainly looks to be basing and making a turn. If I bring up these oscillators, you can see that we're starting to register buy signals as well. So this is looking quite good. And above all else, we're holding X marks the spot for multiple areas of support. Also, LUV a close cousin. Oh, I think I just brought up the wrong chart. My apologies. LUV. You can see here another sort of engulfing type of candlestick up a dollar and 50 cents, very similar to the actual Delta Airlines chart as well. So these are two pretty interesting stocks that um, are starting to, I guess, appear to make a little bit of traction. You can never really 100% uh, assume that it's going to continue, say first thing on Thursday. However, when you see these types of bullish candlesticks at support and you're in this long off from reversal, say for instance, at 51.39, uh, it makes you relatively happy, so to speak, when you see these types of candles set up so soon after, all right? So that's pretty interesting. If I just take a look down our list as well, Apple is sort of stabilizing up $1.78. Spoke about this yesterday. Uh, it's interesting because the NASDAQ, as I've already reported, was a little bit weak today. At least it had that gap down, but we've got Apple, which is still uh, trying to continue off from this turning pivot if this is going to be the back test. We've got Amazon too. Not doing all that much, but it's sort of negated the majority of the losses yesterday, or at least the body candlestick. We still have this open window. Pay attention to volume. That has been a little bit light. I'm just oscillating through my top 12 share list. We've got body pushing to new all-time highs. We had that shooting star candlestick yesterday. A few people actually emailed in and they got in a little bit premature. Uh, on body, but again, up close to $9 as at this recording. I still think it's going to sort of, you know, more or less pivot and rotate around this 270 handle, stabilize uh, before we break out, but still, this is looking quite tempting. At the moment, we've got Caterpillar, which has been under a little bit of pressure this week, but we haven't really seen the major roll down to 148. It doesn't have to happen. But if you culled some positions on, say, Monday, 
uh, I think that was a very smart and intelligent decision to do, to bank some of the profit and uh, and to look for better prices moving forward. COP is still holding up quite nicely as well. Not the biggest of movements. I mean, it's down 16 cents and it's really not following through as strongly as what we have seen in the past. But at the same time, you have to pay attention to these rising exponential moving averages on COP. We've got CVX still at that 130 pivot. I've been sort of reconciling CVX and... Um, and what was the other one? Pardon me. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, Baidu, pardon me. I just, just lost it there for a moment. CVX and Baidu have been somewhat similar, pushing back up into their resistance sort of pivots. Uh, but you can see CVX is still relatively uh, sleepy compared to the movement, at least we saw today on Baidu. So that's a little bit interesting. We've got Google up uh, close to five bucks. It's sort of stabilizing again above this 1,075 handle. This might be the back test of this resistance as new support. So that's pretty interesting too. Still looking at this rallying all the way up to 1,131. We might actually get here by the end of the week. We've got two sessions left. However, if it's not this week, we can almost guarantee we sh uh, that we should be there by the end of May. So that's really what I'm looking at on Google. We have IBM still holding above 145 or very close to 145. I still think that's moving into a Bollinger Band squeeze. I wouldn't get too excited about an immediate play on this. We've got Netflix, which is still coiling, which is pretty interesting too. This is starting to look like that of, you know, a really odd shape sort of sort of wedge. I, wouldn't, I don't really want to call it a rising wedge. At the same time, you can call it sort of an ascending triangle as well. Uh, but above all else, pay attention to those exponentials. The longer we hold on these, uh, the closer we are to the breakout. And you can see that during yesterday's session, we actually tagged that rising 10 what happened we produced a lower wick so there's your first hint as to the future direction of netflix we've got tesla to sort of roll out or to finish with and tesla is still first of all respecting resistance but at the same time respecting support so as we've sold off down to support very quickly what happened we're stabilizing we've got a gap which is probably going to be filled again this week and then what happens we're right smack bang in the middle of no man's land but at the same time and having said that we should be getting into a full bollinger band squeeze which may present us with uh, a relatively neutral trade uh, potentially next week or the week after on Tesla if you choose to trade that stock moving forward. Now, really outside of that list, there hasn't been a whole lot of activity. One stock I will update you on, two more actually is gold and silver. A lot of people emailing in about GLD and uh, I just really want to clarify this, all right, because I, I know a lot of people have been waiting for GLD in terms of well, when can I pull the trick along, blah, 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 that type of story. And for a very long time, we've been waiting for this green rectangular box to be hit, to potentially hit this uh, extension of the trend line. Let me just do this to the right as I speak to you. And also this horizontal support that we've identified and hence why this color is red on the horizontal line. Now, essentially we're as close as to what we can be to all three of these areas of support. We're pretty much in the middle of the trend line, the horizontal support, and of course, this green rectangular box as you can see on my screen. Now, what's going to happen with GOD? is that if this is going to be a turning point, which I still very strongly and firmly believe it is going to be, you're going to have to wait for, of course, the US dollar to pitter out, so to speak, at its resistance area. So the US dollar at the moment, if I can bring up the chart of the US dollar index, it is still relatively strong. And the last swing high, the major swing high was priced in at about 94. So we're trading at 93.27. That's sort of suggesting to us that we have potentially 70 cents on the dollar index to move to the upside uh, until we, we definitively begin to say, hey, what's going on? Um, we should expect the roll sort of thing. So having said that, this GLD trade, it's going to be a process. It's not the same as just trading an individual stock. The, we're sort of waiting, so to speak, on something to happen on, on the US dollar, which is going to help and aid GLD moving further. Now, as I'm recapping this, we've spoken about in the past how pay attention to whipsaws to the downside, all right? We've been saying, look, pay attention for the share price or the GLD index price to overshoot this temporarily and then reverse on heavy volume. Well, what makes this interesting is that the difference between Monday and Tuesday obviously produced a big gap. Now, that gap I was emailing back to a few people, looks potentially to be that of a very early exhaustion gap. And when I say exhaustion, it's a ton of obviously supply coming into the market that the price itself gets hammered, but there's no follow through. So if there isn't any follow through to GLD and if this support area holds definitively, I mean, I'm talking about a proper reversal, expanding volume on the bullish side, we're first of all going to close this gap, but then that is most likely going to be in 
synchronicity, so to speak, with the US dollar rolling very close to or within probably 70 cents of where we find ourselves at the moment, and potentially this being the ultimate pivot on GLD moving forward. So I just wanted to update you on that. It's not going to happen overnight. I've been very outspoken on this. It's sort of a, a lengthier type of process compared to sort of more traditional trades that we look at in our top 12 list or even on sort of um, other watch lists as well that we speak about. Pardon me from time to time. And uh, I hope that's making sense to a lot of people. All right. Now's a fantastic time. We've moved from 129 down to 122. This is pretty decent. It looks like the false breakout of this channel consolidation. We are still making a series of higher highs and also high lows as well. And every time we've pulled on back down into this rising trend line, it's sort of coincided with gaps. I mean, if you go back to the month of December, what do we have? We have a gap. If you go back to the month of June and July, we have a gap towards this resistance area. So you can sort of uh, begin to see this. And this is sort of what I'm talking about at the moment. This is what you call a dumpling bottom. Okay, you get this really nice sort of circular bottom and then a very strong rally out of that support area. Now that's exactly what I'm expecting from this. So you just need to be a little bit patient with GLD moving forward. All right. So that's going to do us. Um, I think I've covered everything I, I really want to speak about. EWZ still being uh, sleepy. 4050 it's trading at at the moment. I'm still holding this, by the way. Haven't liquidated out of this. And again, this is sort of in conjunction with the deeper sort of GLD analysis and the US dollar analysis as well. Personally, I thought it was going to hold 42. It didn't. It's trading at about 40.50 at the moment. So we'll see what happens with EWZ. But it is a little bit of a surprise to me to actually see the support area break and to see. But it's good to see, pardon me, the support area holding here. The other stock as well uh, that I've been speaking about was PayPal from support down here at 72 up to resistance. Well, it's done exactly that. We've made another wave rotation. This is not an ascending triangle. This is what we call a descending triangle. And you can see that we're starting to roll at 77.90, very close to $80 per share. Put out a couple of warnings, take a bit of profit up here. We've seen a little gap down. We filled it today, uh, but it looks as though we may be going to sort of struggle to get back down to 72 over the coming weeks. But this is just going to present us with another trade moving forward as well. So that's going to do us as at this Wednesday afternoon market recap. Please email me if you have any questions. Success at pivotpoint-trading.com. I'm not sure if I'll be back with you later in the week. We'll see what the markets do, but I think you get the gist of what we've been speaking about. If you're looking for more analysis, have a look into that pro analysis class, a great uh, resource that we do each and every Saturday where we actually go through trade analysis and also more so, uh, in more depth anyway, market analysis and really sort of fine tune a lot of entries, <clears throat> pardon me, in the structured analysis that goes into successful trading. All right. So all the best, everyone. I'm going to say farewell to you. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. Farewell.